How, I mean, a special meeting to, uh, with uh, two, uh, two items on the agenda. The first item is the town center affordable housing amendments. The planning board will discuss supplemental recommendations to be provided to the town council related to the town center affordable housing amendments. I guess before we actually discuss the memo, I, gu I guess I should open it up for public comment. Does that be the correct sequence, Maureen? I think that would be fine. Um, okay. I can get the uh, timing ready while people start raising their hands. Let's see. I guess anybody, any of the attendees, I see five people. Uh, does anybody have any, or want, want to speak? Okay. Rhea, use your raise hands feature if you do. Um, there are five people here. No one has their hands raised at this time. Okay, and we have one hand raised. Okay, and there you go. Looks like you're muted, Suzanne. Hi, okay. sorry, I wasn't ready to speak quite yet, but I didn't want to lose my opportunity to speak. Okay, you're on. Okay, thanks. I sent you guys a letter kind of late in the game this afternoon. And I don't know if you had time to read it or not. I just wanted to... We need an address. Excuse me? We need an address. 1180 Shore Road. Thank you. I think what I wanted to speak about was the importance of pausing before we continue uh, down the road with Xanton. Um, also, I, I, I've been following what you've been working on all along, attending your meetings, reading minutes, and I, I seem to find these inconsistencies that are um, a little troubling for me, um, such as and I'm, I'm concerned because it's a public, it's public information and it's just not clear. So in that there was a town uh, article that was published on our website on April 26. Um, and it said that there were uh, six community members who were in favor at, at, at your meeting on 420. In, in favor of this development and two against. And when I and when I rewatched the video, the numbers are actually flipped. There were four that are against and two that are in favor. That mm -hmm. that I, I find I found a little concerning. Um, and then in the draft memorandum today, uh, the number two, the narrow applicability option number one applies to only four lots when I look at the map that was created um, with the 200 foot setback, not five to six lots. You know, the two for Xanton, one on Pearl Street and one at 336 Ocean. So I just feel like it's super important for, because this is a, such a contentious, contentious project that we uh, be very clear and consistent and the information that we provide to the public. Um, also uh, wondering if you guys have looked at the affordable housing trusts that have, uh, that South Portland is doing. Um, also mm -hmm. the, the use of the word affordable has just been misleading to me as well. When I listen to Zanton and his public forum, you know, this point that 0.06 or 0.08% of your assets are added to one's annual income. Um, so a retired person who sells their home for over, you know, 600,000 claiming only a, a, a small percentage of those assets with their retirement income, I, I'm having a hard time with that being considered affordable housing. And so uh, I do commend you for the recommendation for number 83, recommendation of comp plan number 83, but I, I feel like it should be um, 
it should be looked at by uh, an ad hoc committee, sort of led by someone who is well versed in affordable housing that could be creative in thinking about affordable housing in Cape Elizabeth uh, holistically. Um, I think those are just my comments for today. And it, I think you've read my other letters in the past. So I thank you. I, I, I apologize that you are in this difficult situation. I, um, I just wanna thank you for your time as being volunteers to the town in your advisory capacity. Thank you very much. Thank, uh, thank you, Suzanne. Uh, no need to apologize. That's why they pay us the big bucks. Um, the, uh, I can address one thing. The vote on the April 20th meeting was four in favor, two against. I'm not sure where the number six came in because there's only seven members on the planning board. Um, and as far as the four lots versus five or six, I guess I don't have the map here and I honestly don't remember. Maureen, I know you had compiled that. Um, well, the, the, the thing is, I think most of the board has been very clear that they did not want zoning that explicitly applied to one project. And so I've done an analysis, but I haven't made a formal zoning determination that a particular zoning pro, pro, uh, proposal uh, includes one lot and doesn't include another. So I think it's more appropriate to talk about a range. And what we've said is, it's about five to six lots. And there are variables in there that could push a lot in or out of that category. And because you're writing a generic zoning amendment and not a contract zoning proposal, I think it's okay to not have an exact determination of the status of each potential lot. Okay, thank you. And as far as that percentage of, of assets, I see Nathan uh, Danton's hand up, and I suspect he may address that. But before I do, does anybody have any other any, any comments? I do. Yep, go ahead, Caroline. When it comes to determining affordable housing, it is the state of Maine who, who sets the rules for affordable housing and how that's determined and what assets are allowed or disallowed. And it's not. Stanton, if they, they have to follow the rules or else they wouldn't be able to get, get the funding from the state. So, yeah, I mean, that is something beyond our control. We have no, no say in that. Okay. Thank you. Jonathan. Yeah, I just want to echo what Carol Ann said. Since we have nothing to do with the definition of affordable or the determination of what is affordable, um, that's really not what, what the town council has asked us to look into. Um, I don't think it's necessary to get into that here. Yeah, agreed. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, okay, Nate put his hand down. I guess we answered that. Um, I see Sarah Lennon has her hand up, Maureen. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Sorry, I'm not used to this kind of Zoom. I can't see all of you. I'm used to gallery view. Anyhow, um, so you guys can hear me and see me. So yeah. um, I, I guess I just want to address process. Um, you need an address. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Sarah Lennon at 54 Cranbrook Drive. Um, I was on the town council for nine years and on the comprehensive planning committee. And um, I feel that it's super important, like I wrote in my email to you all this evening, that, that everybody stays in their lane and they do um, the job that is outlined by the rules of, of the town and I think that in particular when you're considering this recommendation number 83 that that falls squarely in the purview of the council I think and the reason is that the council is the only body that's elected by citizens so when they consider something or they do the process on it that is tantamount to having the citizens really make the final decision it's more democratic and 
When I was on the, um, I joined the, the um, town council right after the 2007 comp plan was finished and had been sent to us. And one of the first votes I took was to accept it. And I remember that the process to get that comp plan um, ready for state approval, and by that I mean aligning all of the ordinances, all the recommendations, all the goals, updating ordinances, um, looking at wetland regulations, that was like a multi-year process. And some of the issues that honestly were not as big as this issue, which is to get affordable housing throughout our town integrated in a really thought out deliberative way, those issues were much smaller than this. And sometimes they would take a year, honestly, it would go to the council, there'd be a public hearing, it would then go to the ordinance committee, it would be sent back to the council, it would then go to the planning board, it would then go back to the council, sometimes it went through that whole cycle twice. And in an issue that's this weighty, that I think the community, everyone I know really wants affordable housing, but they want it to be done really well and really comprehensively and in an integrated deliberative way, that would have definitely um, prompted a, a committee, I, I think, of made up of, of people that, that the council would appoint and that work in the committee might have taken nine months or a year. So all I'm saying is, I don't believe that you all should take on recommendation 83. I, I, not that you're not capable and incredibly thoughtful people. I just don't think it's your job. And I do think that the council very much needs to address that and deliberate about it and run it through the whole process before it can responsibly accept Mr. Sanson's proposal, which is great. It's just cart before the horse. And I think that part of the issue we're having here is that the timeline is, is so rushed that it has precluded the kind of thoughtful citizen engaged process that it deserves. So thank you. And thank you all for doing what you do. I know you've been working super hard on this. I know it's a thorny issue and uh, I really, really appreciate all the work you do, which I think honestly is sometimes more than anything else, but maybe the school board. So those are my comments for this evening. I hope you won't ask the council for you all to have the authority to conduct this, this study. Yeah, thank you very much, Sarah. Um, let's see, I, Alyssa Tarlow, I see her hand up. Hold on, am I on? Yes, you are. Okay, I'm Elisa Tarlow. I live at 340 Ocean House Road. I'm an abutter to the lots um, that Santon wants to develop on. And I've written a few letters and um, told you all how I feel, which is basically that I am against all of these zoning changes. I am not against an affordable housing project that would, that would go under our current zoning laws, but I am against all of these zoning changes. Um, but I've already written about all of that in my letters. So I just wanted to comment. First of all, I wanted to comment on Suzanne's comment. I think what she was referring to is not the vote that was um, four to two, but last time, but the comments from the public were miswritten about in the, in the note on the Cape Elizabeth website. It was the comments from the public that were reversed. And then I just want to comment on the draft memorandum. So a few things. One is I don't understand why there was a revote on the commercial. There was a clear vote with a lot of discussion that landed four to three against, um, against getting rid of the ground floor commercial, um, which I guess means for the different option than what you're going for now. So I, I don't understand why there was a revote aspect and at all. I don't know how that works in the process. I hope that that when I'm done with my comments, that can be explained. I'm sure I'm not the only one that, that does not understand that, especially considering um, one of the members was absent who voted against it. Um, and it was almost like if it really felt like there was a push to do a revote um, to change people's minds and turn it around. And then this, what you're gonna send to the town council, it doesn't give any background about that. It seems to me that the planning board is very much tied on the issue. There's 
like a three to three and one in the middle kind of situation. And I, I think that the town council deserves to know that. And I think that the planning board should consider not recommending one or the other and saying that we are split. We don't, um, there is, you know, mixed opinion about commercial, more research needs to be done. And I think that that needs to be considered. I also want to point out, um, a, along with a housing diversity study, which definitely makes sense, everyone talks about, oh, we need this, we need that, but, but it's not really based on any real data. So I think that that makes sense to do um, who should do it and how that works. I don't know the process in the town well enough to comment on that. But I think it's important to mention that, we, that there should also be a density study and a traffic study if any of these other changes, which didn't get a lot of debate um, on the planning board regarding the increase in density, the increase in traffic, the, the space behind the town hall, what are the other ways that that could be used? There are so many things that need longer and thorough discussion and who takes on those studies and, and bringing in experts and all of these things should happen before zoning is changed. So I hope that that is considered before giving a recommendation to the town council to change zoning prior to doing the appropriate studies to see if, if, if those zoning changes actually will work long-term for the city. And another thing I wanted to comment on is the number four point, which is public comment. And it says that letters that included a lot of opposition. I think it's like, it, there's a huge amount of opposition. The letters are by far against this project. And I think that that should be clearly stated and, and, and considered by not just the town council who represents the community in a different way than the planning board does, but the planning board should also be taking into consideration, the, especially when, when you're not sure what you wanna do Think about when the majority of the community is against this for so many different reasons, why not say, maybe I'll just go with the community. Maybe I'll consider what the community of Cape wants and what they think is important long-term for Cape, not just pushing a project through to check the box of affordable housing. I think that this is, I agree with the other comments that things are not being done in the way they should in terms of the time, the energy, and the effort behind these big decisions, which will literally change the town forever, how this all goes down. So thank you for letting me have time to speak and for all of the discussions that, that you're all doing on the matter. I appreciate it. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, I, I can address one thing. Um, there's been only one vote. That was the one that took place on April 20th, uh, four to two in favor of recommending option one uh, to the town council. The other uh, item you think you thought was a vote was actually in an in informal poll that I conducted because I wanted a sense at that time of what the board was thinking. It was not a vote. It was strictly uh, an informal poll that had uh, no, I'm trying to, I'm doing a word search, no, no result, no concrete, uh, no concrete result. So that was that. Um, I think we do mentioned the number of letters in the in the memo about, you know, we did get a lot of public comment. And I think we mentioned that. I have to go back and what you said. And one of the things we're going to do tonight when we're done hearing public comment is to, uh, I, I'm sure there'll be some uh, changes to this memo um, uh, when we're, so we'll we'll see where that goes. Um, trying to doing trying to trying to remember what else you said that I may address, but um, it's not coming to me right now. But the big one was the was, was the vote. There was only one vote. Jonathan, Jim, I just want to mention because this was something I brought up at the meeting um, that Maureen confirmed was that all of the information, all the letters that we're receiving from the public. I believe the town council is also getting and that is correct and uh, and to one thing that i think this board agrees on and we've discussed this many times um which was a comment that was brought up earlier is that yes the town council is uh, they are the elected officials they are the policy makers in this town 
we all understand that as a board and we respect that, um, but we were asked to do a task for them and that's what we are doing. Um, so we definitely understand and respect uh, that comment that was made um, by Ms. Lennon uh, earlier. Yeah. Marianne, thank you, Jonathan. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to comment too, there was a comment that this was rushed and I just wanted to comment that I, I don't think it has been rushed. We've had several meetings on this. We've heard comments from the public. We've read all of the letters that have come from the public. We've had a public hearing. We actually took longer than the council asked us to. We're still talking about it tonight. I think we're going on three months of discussing this. So. I just want the record to be clear that this has not been rushed in any way. Thank you. Thank you, Marianne. Um, anybody else? I guess I guess one thing you you went over this last time, Maureen. The process. Um, I, I think uh, Alyssa mentioned a traffic study. The, this project is far from, you know, shovels in the dirt because the town council has to go through the same review. And then should it ever be approved, then Zanton has to come back with plans and we do a, they'll do a traffic study. They're gonna do all these other things to make, to get site plan approval. So this thing is far, far from being a done deal. Yeah, Jim, uh, just, just to clarify, I mean, I've worked on dozens of zoning ordinance amendment applications for the town of Cape Elizabeth. There isn't one of them that required a traffic study for the zone change. Uh, traffic correct. studies are done as part of site plan and That's subdivision correct. review of a project. Yeah. That's what I meant. If I didn't, if I didn't say yeah. that correctly, that's what I meant. No, you you did say it correctly. And and you know, since since I'm being allowed to speak, um, you know, the boarding committee ordinance adopted by the town council establishes responsibilities for all the boards and committees. And that includes the planning board. And I will be happy to provide the planning board with a copy of the page that deals with the planning board's responsibilities. You are explicitly required to provide advice on zoning amendments. Further, it is common practice for the planning board to be asked to actually draft amendments. And the 2007 comprehensive plan that was referenced, uh, the recommendations that came out of that plan included five packages of amendments. And four of those packages, one of them being 30 plus pages in length, were written by the planning board. Can I just say one quick thing? I, I, I didn't mean that you guys were rushing it. I think you've been incredibly deliberate, deliberative and patient and hardworking and had many special meetings. I, I no way did I mean to accuse you of that. What I'm saying is it was rushed to you from the council rather than engaging in the rather long process that should have preceded this by studying what we want for affordable housing all over the town and how to best do it as a comprehensive plan. That's what I meant, not that the planning board was rushing. So Mary, I just wanted to clear that up. Okay, thank you. Um, Andrew, you have your hand up? Yeah, I mean, I think that part of my point was answered by you to, to sort of reiterate that this process is far from done. So I'm not gonna uh, hammer that home. But um, the, the other thing was, was there was a comment about um, uh, the recommendation number three, which was on basically uh, requesting that recommendation 83 from the comprehensive plan be considered. And, and I think actually the way Murray and you have it worded is fairly, um, um, or, or maybe a little bit vague. It's basically asking them to do that. And it's then in the hands of the of town council to actually um, either initiate themselves or pass it back to us. And, and I think, the planning board, their opinion really, um, if I'm speaking for everyone, um, is that it just basically be considered and that that thoughtful process that you're asking for actually be done at some point. And for me, I don't really care who does it, but you know, if they pass it back to us and we, we're, we take that on, it's still gonna go back to the town council anyway, I, I presume for any changes that would happen. So 
Um, I think we're almost certainly going to get involved in that. Where we where we get involved in that process, who knows? But um, I think everybody would agree that it should be done. So that's the important part. Yeah. Well, well said, Andrew. Thank you. Um, I see a couple of people that have already spoken with their hands up. Um, I assume there's another uh, point to be made. So, uh, Suzanne, you had your hand up first, I guess. So I'll call on you if you could keep your comments brief and to the point. I appreciate it. Okay, sorry. Um... I just wanted to correct, uh, well, Elisa's comment that you voted 4-3 against, uh, against removing the commercial use um, was, it's quoted in the minutes from the planning board minutes of March 16th, page nine, bottom of the page, the board voted 4-3 to keep the commercial space requirement. So, um, that's just another inconsistency I'll just point out. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Sarah, do you have anything else? No, I guess. Okay. All right. Do I see any more hands up? I don't see any going once. Going twice. Okay, the public comment uh, period is closed. Um, so board, we have before us a draft memorandum prepared by Maureen, uh, what we want to send to the town council uh, along with the uh, recommended amendments. Um, so I'd like, and, and what's going to happen, that's going to be at the this coming Monday's meeting, and I'll be the one attending the town council meeting and presenting uh, the, the amendments and whatever we end up writing for a draft memorandum tonight. So I just open it up to the board, uh, see what changes you want to make, if any. And Maureen, I guess you're going to have it on your computer and, and, and uh, type it up as we, as we go through this, correct? That, that, that would be my intent to, um, uh, if you could just work your way through it and then I will revise it. And if we can get it to, if you can get it to a point that you are satisfied with, then you could consider adopting whatever the final revision is at tonight's meeting. Okay, so let's just, and also if, if, uh, board, if you could use the right hand feature, raise hand feature, because the way my screen is, I can't see everybody all at once. So let's just start, uh, just be systematic. I, you know, the, the opening paragraph seems pretty self-explanatory. Does anybody have any comments on that? Okay. Uh, and if I go through and somebody has wants to go back and, you know, if we miss something, uh, just let me know. Okay. Supplemental comments and recommendations. Item one, split vote. Anybody want to change anything? Jim, could I speak? Yeah. Um, so I just want to make the, sure the board is aware that at the end of your April meeting, you had a list of things that you wanted to talk about in this memo. And, and this is how I grouped everything. And if I did not group it in a manner that you find appropriate, please feel free to adjust. I, I did try to create headings and common themes, but again, it's up to the board to, to get something that you're comfortable with. So I'm happy to make any, any changes you want. Okay, thank you, Maureen. And from, from the stuff we have, you did a, you know, I think you did a, really, a very commendable job of putting this together in a concise and clear manner. So anyway, but, uh, we'll start with one unless somebody wants to start with another part of the memo. Well, I don't see any hands up. You're killing me here. I actually had no comments. I thought it was actually very well done. I, I, I really, I had nothing, so. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I, yeah, I thought so too, but uh, Carol Ann, I see your hand up. Well, I'm gonna go to number three. Okay. And, uh, and in number three, it does suggest 
suggest that the, the council send it back to the board. I would leave it more vague than that and let the council decide whether they want to send it back to the board or develop an ad hoc committee to do this. I, I don't think, I suggest we don't um, push it one way or the other and let them decide how they want to take it. Good point. I'm fine with that. Yep, yep. Well said, Carolyn. Um, okay. Well, uh, Daniel. Uh, well, I agree with Carolyn. Um, I think that's great. And <clears throat> Maureen, can you just help me out and explain just number two, the narrow applicability and the minimal minimalist approach? I'm trying to remember how you know, we came to that, if you don't mind. <laughs> Sure, you you did this very early on, and, and I, I, okay. I I think there's some uh, some desire to forget that this started. <laughs> but anyway, when when you first started looking at zoning, um, the question was how. I mean, I think when the council delegated it to you, they deliberately gave you some some ability to be flexible in how you approached it. And so the first question was. Do you want to draft amendments that apply to the entire town center district, or do you want it to be relatively narrow to only certain parts of the town center district? And at that time, you said, let's keep it, let's keep it narrow. And that's why the, the draft looks the way it looks. And there's that 200 foot setback from uh, public road rights of way that that really, you know, narrows the, the lots that this applies to. Um, and so if you didn't want it to be a narrow approach, the draft would have been done differently. Thank you. Al. I guess the only question I had, I'm okay with a designated body, but where I believe the council's currently in the budget process, it won't do any good to delegate this if there aren't any funds allocated with it. So I don't know if Maureen would have a suggestion regarding a, a budget, because I would assume it would be an outside consultant that would do the diversity study. Um, I don't really know, Al. It's the, the council really runs the gamut on this. For example, the short-term rental amendments were written by the ordinance committee. As I said, the planning board has written a lot of zoning amendment packages and the council has been relatively reluctant to hire consultants to do that kind of work. But when they have wanted to do that, they find the funding. So mm -hmm. I don't think that there has to be a designated uh, fund amount. If the council wants to do it, they'll do it. I mean, Thanks, if the planning board wants to recommend that there be a consultant hired, certainly that could be included in your recommendation. No. No. Oh. <laughs> anybody else on, well, I guess I'll just open it instead of going by paragraph, anybody else on any part of the memo? Hey, Jim. Yes. John. Well, one thing I, one thing I mentioned, and this was just sort of, my sort of thought process when it came to affordable housing and, and recommendations to the town council was that percentage of one bedroom versus two bedroom. Um, and I know that that's not what the applicant saying is working, but to me, I think that that is something that should be part of our thinking with affordable housing. Um, so it creates more um, any type of diversity among who can actually use or get these units. Um, and again, I, I'm glad that the applicant was able to fit in a couple of two bedrooms, but that's not in here. Um, that's mine. So I don't think this should be what I'm thinking it should be, but I wasn't sure if that could get fit in here just so the town council is aware of some of us thinking that if it's just me by myself, that's fine. We don't need to put it in. But if there is some people on this board, I would just think that that should be suggested in there, at least that some members um, would be in favor of that. Um, being told to the uh, to the town council. I guess I'm confused, Jonathan. What's your what you're saying? It's not sinking in. So basically, that with affordable, if there is zoning that is a is adopted by the town council, 
with regards to affordable housing that part of that zoning recommend or that it be necessary that the affordable housing not just be one bedroom places but also be a percentage of two bedroom places or three bedroom places just multi bedroom places so it's not just one bedroom one bedroom one bedroom type of thing and to me i think it should be at least 50 50 um, with one bedroom versus two or three but like i said this is just my wish list when it comes to affordable housing because i do think that the more um, kind of housing stock that is beyond just one bedroom that could be two bedroom or three bedroom it would encourage and, and would facilitate more families being able to use that and um, affordable housing okay um i see some hands up and i guess if, if you're going to address jonathan's comments let me know but if not I'm, let's not forget that and we'll get back to it okay jonathan sounds good right. Thank yeah marianne um First of all, I just wanted to thank Maureen. I thought she did a nice job of capturing all of the points. Uh, I thought she did a good job of covering all of these points. And then as to Jonathan's, um, I think suggestion, I'm satisfied that Maureen has captured that in the uh, paragraph three, where she says, um, amendments should mandate diversity in the number of bedrooms. I'd rather leave it loose because after all, we're saying someone should do a study. So I'm a little uncomfortable starting out the study by saying 50% should be three bedroom. I don't, I don't know what it should be. And I'd rather just see us say, look at the diversity in the number of bedrooms. Okay, thank you, Marianne. Uh, Andrew. Yeah, I think actually that's um, also captured in number three too, because actually 83 explicitly says they're gonna take a housing diversity study that val evaluates current cost needs. Um, and I, I assume needs is partly, would be like how many one, two versus three bedroom. I actually think like, you know, um, that that actually might really require some outside you know, consultants or, or some sort of uh, input from somebody who knows something more than me, especially on the economics of this stuff. You know, we hear a lot from uh, developers that, you know, no, I can't do this because of the cost. And, you know, okay, well, what, it, you know, is any of this feasible? Like we could say that we want, want all these like three bedroom uh, affordable housing units, but if it's never feasible, then maybe we need to rethink that. And so I wouldn't actually poo poo the idea of having some outside uh, help on this ultimately, but that that doesn't really speak to the, the point of what Jonathan made. And I think it's a good point certainly. And there's a ton of, of feedback from the public about that idea, which I assume the town council has seen many times at this point. So I think it is, rec it is uh, represented here in a way. Thanks, Andrew. Carol Ann. Well, I wanted to also address Jonathan's comment because I wanted to better understand where he was, what he was suggesting. Was he suggesting as they do a study in the future as part of this number 83 that they should have this thing about more bedrooms or is he suggesting we should be putting that in up at the top related to the uh, changes that we've already agreed to send to the council. So I wasn't understanding where where he was coming from with that. So Jim, can I address that? Yes, please. Yeah, so it was more of, since, we, since the town council has said, we believe, and I know we all agree with this, that affordable housing is a substantial public benefit that the town council said, how would this, how would we make zoning of changes to the current amendments that would facilitate and allow for uh, this substantial public benefit to come in? So my, what my suggestion would be is that this go along with these zoning amendments now, as opposed to going and being part of a study um, in the future, <clears throat> because I think that if we are going to have affordable housing that is going to bring in as many people as we can 
um, that it would need to be a, uh, it would need to have mandated numbers of bedrooms and houses or bedrooms um, for these units as opposed to down the road thinking of it. And uh, I, I did see that in the language. I just, my fear with, if you don't give a number is that someone says, well, hey, you know what? We, we offered two out of 50, therefore it's diverse. Um, sometimes you need to be specific on the numbers or percentages that you're looking for uh, so that you don't get a developer who then says, you know what? I made it diverse by adding one because that's all I needed to do. And I'm not saying that that's what's happening here, but I just get that concern. And then if we say, well, that's not what we think is the intent behind what we are uh, offering here. They say, well, that's what was adopted. And then and that becomes a whole thing uh, when we're looking at legislative intent, which we rather just have it clearly laid out. So, um, so I'm going to interrupt you, Jonathan. So you're, yeah. you're advocating that we include a bullet specific to the diversity of bedrooms in the number of bedrooms in the apartments as a separate bullet, not something under paragraph, you know, number three, paragraph four, or wherever it is. Is that what I'm hearing? That's, I that's, guess that's me, yes. Get. Yep, that's, that's what I would be advocating for. So when the town council hears what our thought process was when it came to this, because like we said, I mean, the, there were four people who said that they were fine with getting rid of the commercial space. Uh, we didn't get into the parking. We didn't get into the heights. We didn't get into um, this, I believe the, uh, the square footage or the footprint. And so we didn't really address the other three things, um, three zoning amendments that they were looking at. And to me, um, when we're getting into the recommendation of, okay, are you okay with getting rid of commercial zoning? Yeah, but me, I, I think that if you're gonna have affordable housing that the units should um, have clear cut how many are going to be one bedroom, how many would be two or three, something along those lines. But like I said, I might be out on an island by myself here and this isn't about what I specifically want on this, but that's just something that I think I would like to see um, be part of what goes back to the, to the town council. And like we said, this is a memorandum. This is not a recommendation. This is sort of just making sure that the town council is aware of what we were talking about and what we were discussing. And that's something that I think is important. Uh, Marianne. Um, are, 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 Carolina, you all done? Oh, yeah, sorry. Okay, go ahead, Marianne. I, I again, I'm concerned because we're suggesting that the town council study this issue. So I, I hate to start putting foregone conclusions ahead of a study. On the other hand, if you were to add the word weather before the sentence, so it reads whether affordable housing should mandate diversity in the number of bedrooms, I could go along with this. Um, Maybe say, for example, at least. I'm saying whether, yeah. whether, yeah, now I'm confused because we've made a, little too, a few too many changes as I was trying to think, sorry. <laughs> um, the, okay, the study should include whether affordable housing should mandate, and I would just say diversity in the number of bedrooms. I don't know what real adds to it. Um, but if, if we had that word weather, so it's not a foregone conclusion, I could go along with this, this language. But as I, I understood it, Jonathan was basically saying that he thought it should be and that it's not necessarily something that needs to be, he's not, you're not talking about the study here, are you, Jonathan? You're talking about actually saying, I think there should be a half to yeah. a third of the unit should be two to three bedroom, period, full stop. And, and I'm, yes. I'm sorry, my concern here is, I think we're going to find ourselves in the same situation we are with mandating commercial. Like, let's study this a little more before we start to put more mandates in that may end up being just impediments. 
Yeah, I don't think any of us are knowledgeable enough on the Maine State Housing Authority. Maybe some of a couple of us are, but I'm not. Um, you know what they say. Um, so I'm not comfortable with putting a hard number in there at all, because uh, as Marianne said, what are the unintended consequences? Yeah, but Jim, I think common sense and general life experience, we would all say that you're going to get more families into units if they're multi-bedroom as opposed to one bedroom. I don't think we need a study that's going to tell us that. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Uh you know, I guess I have to respond to that a, a little bit. Um, I think we're tending to approach this in a sort of upper middle class thought process of you can't have family housing if it doesn't have three bedrooms. And my sense is that two bedrooms could have uh, two adults and two children a one bedroom, there are people who have one bedrooms and family housing. So again, I just wanna make sure we're not putting up impediments when in fact there would be families more than willing to move in a single mom and a kid into a one bedroom or two parents and, and two kids into a two bedroom. Mayor, uh, Jim, I just gotta respond to that. I was not trying to say we need three bedrooms in order to have families. I work with community housing in Maine consistently every week. I'm very, very astute when it comes to housing and the needs of housing, uh, especially in what I do. So I understand that. And I'm not trying to say we need three bedroom houses, but what I am saying, and from a lot of the comments that I've heard from people who are interested in moving into these locations because they're looking for affordable housing is that it would be very difficult for a person with two kids to live in a one bedroom uh, unit. That's what I'm trying to say. And that's what I've, I've heard a lot. And that's what I see and I've experienced during my, my life and uh, seen from talking to people who um, are looking for housing. Um, so this is, so you're saying, you, you, uh, Jonathan, you'd like to you'd like to tailor this down and instead of being less precise, you want it to be more precise. Um, and the half to one third, you know, I don't, you know, I guess it is a recommendation that town council doesn't have to do it. I, I'm just bounce, you know, I I, I hate to. To limit thing because I don't know what, what the study would show. And like you said, it doesn't take a rocket science to know if you have two bedrooms or more, you're going to have more families. But um, we also don't know. I know from what Nathan said, um, adding more, the, the, cost, the money, the, the, the figures don't work. He also said his proposal for this whole thing is not intended to be a fix all for the whole town. This will serve one group of what should be um, a larger issue. Uh, that's what I remember him saying. So this one proposal isn't gonna solve all the affordable housing problems. Um, Al, we haven't heard from you for a while, go for it. I'm okay with it as worded in that it just, ask the study to determine whether diversity should be mandated as an example, half to one third. If the study comes back and says 25% should be two bedroom, they've looked at it and they've made a recommendation. So I would be okay with it as written. It just asks that the study address it um, and is trying to provide some specificity relative to providing a guideline. That guideline may vary between 60% AMI, 80% AMI, or 100% of AMI. So it might come back and provide different recommendations based on different income levels. So I don't think the intent as written is to mandate a set number. It's to ask it to be studied as part of the study. So. Fair enough, Al. Fair enough. I yeah, I I gonna I agree with that. Carol Ann. Uh, 
I, I'm fine with the way number four has been uh, rewritten. And I would just like to, to say, this is a recommendation for the council's consideration. We've already agreed uh, or voted on the zoning changes to put before them. These are our recommendations. These are not rewrites. These are not zoning amendments. These are recommendations of what they should, we think they should consider. And I just would like to move on from this. <laughs> okay. Well said. Daniel. Yeah. Um... I, I'm gonna um, say that I'm 100% uh, behind Jonathan's reasons on why um, number four is written. And I like number four. I kind of don't like the word weather in there because it's like, hmm, but uh, I, I like it a lot. And I just kind of wish maybe we had gotten this into the into the um, option one or option two, you know, just kind of thinking, thinking back. But so I'm good at number four. We didn't, we didn't, we don't have the data in order to uh, put hard numbers into option one or option two. We, we just... Okay. Yeah, that makes, I, I, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments on, on four or any other part of the, of the memo? I have a question. Yes. Uh, in my opinion, this statement right here um, is just repeating number four. Do you want to keep this statement or I can delete it? Uh, I delete it. That's my I'm, I'm going to throw this. Uh, it might confuse things. Yeah. Okay, to take it out. Yeah, I guess I was going to say I, you could make it a lead in on, on number four. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can take this and put it here, um, but I'm hearing that there's I, a not, there's there's real concern. This is a high enough priority; it probably needs to stand on its own. Yeah, yeah. I, I I like Carol Ann's suggestion of having that as a lead in. On yeah, it. yeah. Because we certainly discussed it. Yep. <laughs> Let's see. I should be able to do that. Cut. Oh, cut. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> you have to undelete it. Uh, okay. I always like doing this with people watching. It's oh that, yeah, it makes it much more fun. <laughs> Last. Oh, accept them. <laughs> I see your hand up, Marianne. I'm just going to wait for. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to lower oh, it. Yeah. Okay. It should lower automatically after we speak. <laughs> okay. Any anything else? Any other comments or changes? Okay. Uh, any motions? Do I have any motions? I'll make a motion that we, uh, based on the based on the materials and facts presented to the planning board, recommends the supplemental town center affordable housing amendment comments and recommendations to the town second. council. I second that. We have a motion and a second. Maureen, please, any discussion? Maureen, please take the roll. Mr. Bedensky. Yes. Mr. Gilbert. Yes. Ms. Jordan. Yes. Ms. Lynch. Yes. Mr. Palmer. Yes. Mr. Sarbeck. Yes. Chair Hubner. Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Um, that's all the items we have on uh, the agenda for the special meeting. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I have a, I have a comment before we yeah. do that. Okay. Uh, it sounds like we need to do something to rectify the error in the March 16th minute. It indicates we took a vote when we did not. That is true. That is a. And true. how do we go about doing that? How about I will provide you for your May 18th meeting, I will provide you with the March 16th minutes and proposed edits. Okay. okay. And, you know, 
honestly, the only official votes that the planning board takes are the votes are the motions that say be it ordered. Because in your rules, the procedure, you're only allowed to make a decision when it says be it ordered. But we can make sure we're a little more precise with our language. Yep. Yep. For the uh, listening public, that's my way of um, focusing our attention so we use our time wisely to take informal polls so I don't wa we don't waste any time on something that's not going anywhere. So that was the reason for that informal poll at that time. So, so that, can, can we have that language reflect that it was an informal poll because that's sort of what it was? Yeah. Right. I will, I will have revised language for your consideration at the May 18th meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. And in all the time I've been on the board, that's the first time we've come up with minutes that uh, needed to be addressed after the fact. <laughs> yeah. If I could just point out, those informal polls that the board takes really are helpful in guiding staff on what you want drafts mm -hmm. to look like. So but we just need to recognize them for what they are. So. Yes. 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 Be consistent. Okay, do I have an emo uh, any other comments or a motion to adjourn? Motion we adjourn. Second. Second, there you go. Maureen, take it away. Mr. Bedensky. Yes. Mr. Gilbert. Yes. Ms. Jordan. Yes. Ms. Lynch. Yes. Mr. Palmer. Yes. Mr. Sarbeck. Yes. Chair Hubner. Yes. All right. I guess we'll all see you May 18th, if not sooner. Oh, boy. Good night. And Maureen, I'll give you a call sometime later this week about, because I have to present this to the town council, all right? Right. So planning board members may want to watch the May 10th meeting and watch Jim in action. Okay, cheer him on. Go, Jim. Go. Sounds good. Good luck. Thanks, Ma Thanks, Maureen, for your work on this. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks Maureen. Maureen. You're very welcome. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.